2020 was a record year for stress, worry, anger and sadness worldwide. According to a recent survey, a record four out of 10 people reported experiencing, quote, a lot of stress over the previous 24 hours. And what's fascinating is children were not included in the study, but they're among the most vulnerable and ill-equipped to deal with stress. Well, my next guest says meditation could be the answer and it's never too early to start. Joining us now is the entrepreneur and author Malika Chopra. She's her most recent book is My Body is a Rainbow, which aims to teach meditation and mindfulness skills to young children. Malika, fantastic to have you on the show. Um, I have to admit, I've read all of your books, including your latest one. And I think they're a brilliant introduction to, to mindfulness and to meditation, not just for sort of older children, but also much younger children, which I know is where your latest book, My Body is a Rainbow, is focused. Um, just start by explaining what you were hoping to bring to both parents and young children with this book well first thank you so much for having me and yes these books I think are my contribution of sharing many of the lessons that I learned growing up about how to self-regulate how to feel peaceful when I became a parent I saw the need um, not just in my girls but also amongst their friends for tools um, tools to just be able to breathe um, tools to express their feelings, tools for self-reflection. And so the goal of my books is to give um, kids directly some of these tools, but also to help parents figure it out with their kids because we're all, all trying to figure out and do our best. You know, it's quite fascinating when you say the words mindfulness and meditation to some people who've never done this in their lives. I think they're probably going, oh, as they listen to this, that's not for me. I don't understand. But I think what people do need to understand is just how subtle you do this in the books. I mean, I find your books a great introduction for adults, never mind children. And we won't tell your, uh, your father that because you're, you're sort of uh, <laughs> competing with him to some degree in, in the entry level into this, which is fascinating. And I'm just going to hold up the book because you use colors as a way to do it. And just saying to people, just basic things like put your hand on your stomach and, and think about the emotions, what you feel when you're happy, when you're sad in these places. And then you tie it to something like a simple as saying, I am strong, or touch your heart, and I am loved. Just explain what I think for me is quite fascinating here is using color, tying it to emotions, tying it to surroundings, but also self empowerment, which not only for children, I think, but for adults too, is so important. So yes, you know, I think as you mentioned, when we talk about meditation or mindfulness, or frankly, even stress or anxiety, it's really difficult to say what exactly do these words mean? You know, we use these words a lot. Ultimately, um, and this is why I love working with children, this is about breathing, about connection, about joy, um, and about release. And so in this book, My Body is a Rainbow, of course, it's written for two to five year olds, but actually the exercises in it are come from wisdom traditions, which are kind of exploring different parts of our body. So when you talk to a child and you say, um, you know, where do you feel nervous? They'll often say, oh, I feel butterflies in my stomach. Or when you're sad, they have heartache. Um, or they're very conscious about sweaty palms or, you know, their throat feeling tight. So uh, the goal of this book is to kind of go through different parts of our body where we feel big feelings. Kids are good at, um, feeling big feelings and we use breath um, we use the color because again it just gives it a way to access it without it kind of being um vague and, uh, and then visualize it and to visualize it and then use affirmations so kids feel strong they feel heard they feel powerful i mean i've watched an interview with you as well and you were talking about using food because a huge part of what you do here is also to try and make it fun um strawberry you and I both love chocolate. Chocolate's another one. Um, lime or a lemon. And even just you know, biting a lemon and talking about what the sensation is, how that feels, um, whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable. It's just allowing children, helping them in some way to verbalize emotions, verbalizing interactions and what's going on around them and, and talking to parents. I mean, these are basic things, but they're so important for life. And as you said, you know, you began doing this as a child and you've imparted this wisdom to your children too. 
Yes, and so the food exercise is a great one because it is fun. You do it together. But what I recommend is you use sight. So you look at the colors, you know, right. the color of a red right. strawberry versus a lemon, um, the taste, the smells. But also you can think about the story of the food. How did it get to you? Where did it grow from? So even in a simple, um, you know, meal, uh, you can really share something powerful with your children but also for yourself. So uh, yeah, I'm glad you found that exercise helpful. Yeah, I do, because I, I think connecting not only the way that we're perceiving ourselves, but also how we interact with others. And that's what's so brilliant, I think, about your books. Um, what's your advice to parents? Because they can buy these books for children, but again, and I go back to the point I made about when you're talking about things like mindfulness and, and meditation, I think people can be daunted. What's your advice for parents if they're, they're seeing that their children are struggling at this moment, that they want to equip them better, and, and perhaps these books are a way to do it, but just advice to parents for, for helping their children, dealing with everything, themselves and their surroundings, their environment. So my first advice to parents is um, don't worry first about your children, worry about yourself. So um, are, do you have a practice? And because parents, we lead by example, not just words. So I do recommend that parents find a practice. Um, parents are conscious of the way that they eat, they move, they speak, because um, our kids are always watching us. But then with kids, it's keeping it really simple and really age appropriate. And that's why I'm working on these books. Make it fun. Um, my first book uh, that I wrote for kids is called Just Breathe. And it's as simple as that. Just take a deep breath in and out. And so um, these practices don't have to be complicated. They don't have to be intellectual. And in fact, it's kids who may show us how easy it is. So it's everything from just taking a deep breath to then maybe going to three breaths or four breaths to taking a mindful walk, um, a mindful meal. And the goal as parents should be to engage with your kids and have fun and also realize like each kid will find their own way. Never try to make um, a kid who's restless try to sit still for too long because that's going to uh, create stress. So maybe find a movement exercise that works. So the goal is to just, as I say, give them a tool or several tools and let them discover and play and have fun with it. I've got the perfect page for that, which involves colors swirling around your toes and fingers, pink, in fact, around your fingers and um, saying, I am magic, which was my favorite page of the book. Melika, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about it. You can hear I'm a fan of the books, I truly am, for adults, big kids as well as children. Malika Chopra, author and entrepreneur, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We're back thank after this. You. Stay with us. <laughs>